All right, guys. This is the Dart 165s cut for two or two one sixes. This is first time out of the box. I wound up using the the same 202 as I goofed up on the 194 seat. Figured I'd change the least amount of uh, things possible. And I grabbed an old uh, 1.6 that has a rounded front edge. Now, basically all I did is I cut these seats and I blended them into the chamber, uh, into the bowls a little bit, and that's it. All right, the the throats are still very tight, uh, way tighter than they should be, according to everyone else. Let's see what they are. Intake is 86. Exhaust is 80. Now, why didn't I blow that throat out? Well, it's easy to take it out. It's not so easy to put it back in. It is a street ride. And maximum RPM, well, I think it's going to do better than that. It was about, only about 5,500 to 6,000. I think it'll do 6,500. But that may be uh, pie in the sky. You can see we got a decent pattern on the chamber. Decent pattern around the exhaust valve. Decent pattern in the bowl. A little more on the intake valve than last time we saw it. And we look fairly good in the bore. Now you can see by the valve job, it's got a very low top cut. It's got a fairly narrow seat. And it's got a very deep bottom cut. Nothing fancy as far as angles. Not on this job. This needs to be uh, reliable and uh, street performance. So standard angles. Now I do have to go through and make sure my valve seat heights are right on the money where I'd like them to be in reference to where they were on the 194.15 valves. Doesn't matter. It's probably going to need custom length push rods anyway because that's the way it kind of works out for me anyway. Very, very rarely do I get to put a stock push rod in. The exhaust is the same idea. It's brought right out to the size of the of the insert. Okay, it's got a relatively thin seat. And then it's uh, got a small top cut. The bottom cut is burred right into the bolt. You can see I use a fine textured old burr. And that short side was touched with some sand cloth to make it uh, smoother. Is that short side perfect? No, it's got a little bump in it somewhere, but uh, it hasn't been thoroughly gone through. Good enough for a first test. All right, guys, let's take a look at this. Okay, on the right is using the right size valve on the 194 seat. This is cut for the 202. You would think it would be better. Let's see how we did. Now, these pluses and minuses are in reference to the 194. Plus, 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 plus. Minus, minus, minus. Why would we lose? I know why. We'll go through the airspeeds. I bet you'll be able to figure it out, too. Now, where this gets problematic is... If we take this same port and then look at what it did with the wrong size valve on it. Let's do that now. Okay, so this is going to make my head hurt for a while. Now this is the 194 seat with the wrong size valve on it. These pluses and minuses are in reference to these flows with the seat cut for a 202 and a 202 valve on it. Plus, 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 minus at 500. Plus, plus, plus. How is that possible? Well, it's kind of interesting. I am going to reserve my theory on that because I want you guys to discuss it. 
let's go back to what it did with the 194 and take another look at it. Okay, we need to look at our swirls. These pluses and minuses are in reference to these swirls here. Minus, minus, plus, 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 plus. Okay. So you got to remember we got a bigger valve that's more shrouded. What does that do to our swirl? Well, it's also got different port dynamics. And we'll be able to tell when we take a look at our, our air speeds. Uh, very telling what needs to be done now. Of course, because this port was originally designed with the 194 somewhere along the line. I put the wrong damn valve in it. But it wound up getting higher flows with the the bigger valve. So just by putting a bigger seat in changes the internal air profile. So it's going to need more work. I, I realize that. One of the reasons I didn't want to change it over from a 194 to a 202 is I knew I would have to do that and it was really really good with the, the 194 even though I had the wrong size valve in it. Okay, top page is the 194. We're looking at our intake air speeds. These pluses and minuses are in reference to these. What happened with our pinch? Well, we dropped a tiny bit on the roof. It's still way fast. The middle gained even more speed. Way fast. And the bottom is relatively good. We could live with that. That dropped a touch. Okay, how do we do on the roof? Well, we went up quite a bit with the bigger valve. That's actually a good thing. Notice they're not nearly as even as they were because this was designed with that size valve. This is going to be changed. And guess what? As we take a look at our short side and we figure out where we got to do some work on the short side, right? Because we got plus, minus, minus. But look how fast this is, okay? We got to do work on that short side. The reason we wound up losing flow. I think it's the short side. You guys can tell me whether I'm wrong or not. In any case, the short side was not blown out for a 194. So it's definitely narrow for a 202. And I did not knock the apex down. Remember, completely stock, it's got a really nice shape. So you don't want to ruin that. Okay, we got better news on the exhaust side. This is our 1.6. Remember, I cut the seat. I just touched the chamber with my burr to make it relatively smooth. And uh, blended our bottom cut into the existing throat. It may have had a little bit of metal removed from the throat, but it's a way bigger valve. Now this throat is only 80% super tiny can't work right guys okay street ride street ride street ride okay how did we do this is the one five this was after i did work on that chamber i got lots of losses on this one right okay but that's where the chamber is now so i figured this is the best comparison we have pluses everywhere we're almost 200 at 600 lift Put a pipe on it. 219.6, 225. Lots of race heads don't even touch that. Don't believe me? Look it up. That's fine. I'm, I, you're not going to hurt my feelings, guys. Now, the big question is, should we do any more work to this? Should we open up that throat? Remember, my go-to my go throat ratio on an exhaust is like 86 I think before I do that, I'm going to take my my set of Dart 165s and put them on the bench. And, or at least dig up an old sheet and see what we got. Because I know I think I opened those up more. But I was getting ridiculous flows out of like 240. More than it needs, by far. Okay, this I think that is plenty. Many guys said just leave it a 1.5. It was plenty good enough the way it was. I mean, even after I changed the chamber and lost some flow, it's still not bad for a street ride. It's quite good. 
let's take a look at our air speeds right according to this versus this it looks like our air speeds are better let's take a look and compare them. okay top is our one five those are our air speeds these pluses and minuses are in reference to these how do we do minus minus plus they are e more even top to bottom okay here minus 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 we lost speed through the whole middle not necessarily good is it okay how do we do on this side minus minus plus they are more even than these though so from top to bottom we're more even but across the board we lost some speed now in reality you know three 340 is faster than we want to see right and we want to average all of this well, we let the program do it but if we average this it, they should come out pretty darn close to 300 okay some guys can do the math on that and tell me how far off I am but that's with the really tight throat what will happen to them if I open up the throat I'll be honest I think I need to open the throat up a little bit more than at 80 percent just just saying it has something to do with dv says you know it's looking for area even though uh you know venturis are a funny thing you can get them really really efficient if we did the area on that tiny throat i bet it's over 100 percent efficiency right now all right guys so I got plenty more to do. I have another head to go through. I should actually talk to you what, how, what we figured on doing. Because the guides were actually quite good, I talked to the customer and I was like, you know, I'm just going to put an, uh, a beveled edge on the end. So you guys can see that. It's, my focus is not great lately. Okay. I do that with this tool. I'm pretty sure I've showed this before. It's had a rough life. I mean, it was my dad's. You can see the end of it. I had the machine for, for a smaller drill when I was a kid. And it's it's had a rough life. But it's it does the finest job of making a nice beveled edge. So when I do a valve job, I have a flat surface for the sue pilot if that's on an angle you're going to have a hell of a time getting your your valve job concentric so what i did is i put that little burr little burr that little angle on the end both ends and i gave it a very quick hone with my hone all the reason you do the hone all is you take out any lumps and bumps from the factory tooling you make sure it's dead straight and you pick up very 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 little as far as more clearance. So this has got iron guides with a mild hone on them. The one thing about getting the guides straight and honing them, it makes your valve job so much easier to do. Now the pilot is kind of a pain because it fits so perfectly in there. As soon as the, as soon as the stone hits the seat, and has the slightest vibration, the pilot works its way out. So you constantly have to make sure the pilot is reset just right. Other than that, straight guides are an absolute must-have. Just my opinion, which means absolutely nothing. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a good night.